Hey everybody, Lars here. Time for our first review video for our second unit. And when you're seeing this, we will have met in class and you're already through unit one, so you kind of know what we're all about. Sit with the resources, do a couple of assignments, answer a forum post question, and then do your quiz. So that's pretty much the anatomy of a unit. And you're moving along and you understand what that's all about. So now we stop worrying about, you know, the anatomy of a course and how you're going to do things. And now we can start worrying more about the Python. So what I did, and we're going to get right to it, is I already crafted a program. We are going to use it. Do not worry about typing it in because, as always, we are – let me run this bad boy. We are going to put it up on Sakai for you, and then you're going to be able to use that. But what we're going to do is we are going to review – this code about strings, then we're going to review some code about lists, then we're going to talk about a uh, couple of idiosyncrasies and funny things about Python as far as printing strings is concerned. I am sweating like a crazy person because I just got back from the YMCA and my body doesn't know that it's not, my fat body doesn't know that it's not exercising anymore. Also, it's Saturday, two, three days before the end of Unit 1 that I'm shooting this video because dun 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 dun. I have jury duty on Monday, so I'm going to have to go and waste an entire day. Well, I, I don't want to say waste. You need to do your civic duty, and if you get called for a case, do a good job. And hip -bap, 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 bap bap But most times I get called to jury duty. I sit there, and I do nothing, and I don't get called, and it's a waste of time, and you have to watch that crummy, useless video at the beginning of the process, and it's just... <laughs> I don't think they have wireless for people to use at Middlesex County Courthouse... So I am basically not going to be able to do anything. Anything I can't do with my phone, I'm going to be stuck. So I am trying to get a lot of stuff done this weekend, knowing that I'm going to have roughly an eight-hour block on Monday where I get nothing done. And if you know anything about semesters and teaching, there's no such thing as an eight-hour block where you're not doing anything. Your life is basically – my life is planned out until May. All right? So that sucks. I got to do, think ahead. And I got to get some stuff done. So we're going to talk about Python. All right. All right. Let's get started. First of all, I define a string right here. And it's fairly long. You can make strings as long as your heart desires in Python. And I called the variable name my string, And I assigned it using double quotes. The default in Python is single quotes. But I use double sometimes. Because if you want to use single quotes inside the string, you can do that if you use doubles. Plus, you also got to remember, I'm an old cycle four dog. So when I'm coming up, I'm using double quotes in my strings in Pascal, C, later on Java. So I've got double quote on the brain at this point. I've already ruined. All right. So single quote is the default in Python. But as we know, if we did the slides, you can interchange. You can go back and forth. If you want to use double quotes inside of a string, then use single quotes as the delimiters. And if you want to use doubles inside, you use singles as the delimiters. That's all. All right, so uh, where Eliza Doolittle, uh, Pygmalion, blah, 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 the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. So I create that string right there. Then what I do is I say, okay, look, tell me how long it is. And I show you that we can run the len function on my string. And right here it tells us that it's 43 characters long. So remember, we're computer scientists. We start counting from zero. So this is zero, and it goes all the way down to 42. So if I print out that n, it will be 42. So you're like, what do you mean print out that n? Well, we have strings. So now we can access individual pieces of the strings with indexes. So if I say print my string of 5, we start counting at 0. 1, 0, 1, 2, the blank counts. So that's 3, 4, 5. So the lowercase a is the fifth thing in my string. We come over here, and that's what was printed, the a, okay? We can also do slicing, where we can slice in and get a substring. Now, and it's the first time you're seeing this, and you're going to hear me say it a bazillion times, and you're going to get bored with it. Indexes, I mean, um, intervals in Python, the first item is inclusive. It's the first thing you want. The second item is exclusive. It's the first thing you don't want. So right here, you're telling Python, I want you to take my string, start at the fifth item, and go until the 14th, okay? 
that interval, that second part of the interval is exclusive. And you're going to see something weird with that later on when we play around with printing. Okay? So when I print this, it says Ain and Spa. Okay? If we were to go up there and do the math, like we know that is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You can see the A is 14. That I is 15. So the I is the first thing we don't want. We get Ain and Spa. Okay? Second part of an interval, first thing we don't want. All right. Out of bounds error. Obviously, I wanted to run the program so we don't have an out of bounds error. But as we said, we've got a 43 character string. It starts at zero. It ends at 42. When I print my string of 42, as I said up there before, we get an N. Okay, right there. What if I ask for 43? What will happen? I'm asking for the 44th character of a 43 character string all right let's run it and find out i think i know what's going to happen boom we get an error and it says string index out of range we went too far python doesn't like it and gives us an error okay now <coughs> we're going to find some stuff out about that later and also if you move forward and do more programming and other things you're going to learn that in the programming language c that wouldn't be an error C lets you do whatever your heart desires. So you would just go and grab what's ever in that memory spot because all that number is to C is an offset. So it knows where zero is. Give me whatever's 44 spaces away. Ha! C just does it. Okay? Python doesn't do that to you. Python will help you out and throw you an error. What we're going to learn as we go along in this course is Python is really C. It's just a nice, friendly wrapper around the C language. So... A lot of people, when they go through Python and they teach Python, they'll go through and they'll tell you what's different from C because at the at the end of the day, when Python was created, it was C. It's C that's being used. And as we get further along in Unit 3 and some other things along the line, you're going to learn that we use the C libraries and we do other C-like things. So C is uh, Python's daddy, okay? Um, let's keep going with this stuff. You can do math inside of your index. So you can say uh, 4 plus 5 is 9, and then get the ninth item, which over here is an I. You can get the same I by doing 12 minus 3. You might be thinking to yourself, why would I want to do that? And I will tell you that sometimes you can set up a long string with like uppercase characters with different words and different X's and O's and things like that, and it's useful in gaming. It's almost like having a sprite sheet. A sprite sheet is a whole bunch of different drawings on the same image, and you use coordinates to go grab what you want. Well, sometimes with strings, you can do that too. You can grab a substring and get different words and things that you're using in your video game. Like you could keep a score. You could have X's and O's for actually symbols that you use in the game and different things like that. So doing indexing math actually comes more in handy than you would think. Okay? I mean, sometimes I know I'm going to set a certain words for a certain thing at 20 and then my first words at 20 my next words at 24 my next words at 28 so i can go by multiples of four from 20 and i can use index math in that way as you get going with your programming you're going to see what's going on all right then as i go through in the slides i tell you about methods methods are just little functions or programs that work on strings and we're in unit five you're going to learn about object orientation and you're going to learn a lot more about this for the time being, just think of these things as little mini programs that can run on your strings. Right here, we take the whole string and we put it in uppercase, okay? And then we, and then here we print my string blank so that I can show you when I print upper, it just prints it in uppercase. It doesn't change the string. This, the plain string right here underneath is still lowercase, okay? So all this did was print it out upper or created an upper to be printed and that was it. OK, so now I do the same thing down here with a method called replace. So my string replace the Spain with France. And you can see this right here. The rain in France falls mainly on the plane. But then when I print the string again, it's back to Spain. These changes are temporary. All right. If you want to make them permanent, you need to do what I'm doing down here and assign it to a new variable name. So I created a variable called new string and I do the replace and I replace Spain with Germany this time. And this time it keeps. OK, because I print new string and it says the rain in Germany falls mainly on the plane. So that's the way we do things with strings. You can't. The, the reason is and you're going to see it 
in a second when we do lists and we compare lists with strings. Strings are what are called immutable. Once you create them, you're not changing them. Um, that's good for some things, maybe bad in other things. But uh, for beginning programming purposes and common sense purposes, I like it. I think it's a, it's a good feature. Coffee. Uh, but y you'll see if you want to do something in Python, there's usually a way to do it like this. You just assign, you just make the change and assign it to a new string. It's good to keep the old stuff anyway, because you never know when you're going to have to backtrack and go back and get what you wanted. All right. One last thing. There's a good method right here called count where you can count the appearance of different uh, characters in your string. This comes in handy if you're ever doing something like I know what I do in a gaming context is if you do something, I'll have an X appended to a string. And if it's something good, it's an X. If it's something not good, it's a zero and X, 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 zero, zero, X, zero blah, 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 down the line. I use the count method to tell me how many X's they were at the end of the day. All right. And you can see, let me rerun. I put that back yet. And you can see when I rerun here, my string count, it tells me six. So there are six ends in the string. Is that the case? There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six. Yes. Okay. So strings, you can find out how long they are. You can index into them to get single characters. You can also get substrings. In Java, it's called substring. But in Python, we call it slicing. You can slice into the string and get little subsets if you want. You will get an out-of-bounds error. If you ask for something that doesn't exist, you can do math in your index. String has a whole bunch of methods. These are not the only methods, my friends. Okay. Later, although if you want to do it now, just Google Python docs. In the Python documentation, if you look up strings, you can see there are a whole boatload of methods that you can run on your strings. Okay. There's also a lower. There's other things besides replace. There's going to be something that we're going to learn about later called split that takes your string and strings and makes it a list. Um, it, there's a whole bunch of things you can do. Okay. Strings are useful. You are going to find going forward, even in this class, string manipulation is helpful and it is cool. All right. All right. Then what we're going to do, one, two, three. How about two, three? That was four. We're going to go up here and I have a bunch of code waiting for us to use about lists, but I also have some other code down here that we're not going to use yet. So get out of here. All right. Lists. Now, if I rerun, I get my list stuff. All right. Do I want to put that up a little bit so you can see that? Okay. Now we've moved away from, oh, I'm still sweating. We've moved away from strings and now we're talking about lists so you can see up there up top i give myself a list and it's just the letters of my dopey name lars l a r s single quote around them so it's a list with four single characters okay and then when i print it it's printed out as a list okay you get brackets on either side and you see each individual item it's almost like and you'll hear me say this a million times it's like a bookshelf okay I want to keep items but I want to keep them together so I grab a blank bookshelf and I put them all in there in this case this list contains my name okay down here I can print it and see that it comes listed as a list but I can also go into it and grab individual items so if I print one two remember we started zero zero one two it should print the R and it does okay so you might be saying to yourself, hey, that's great. Who cares? It's the same thing as a string, but it's not for two different big reasons. OK, remember these reasons. Look down here. Different types and mutability. I can go to list two and make it a seven. All right. And then I print the list again and it's a seven. OK, I can't do that with a string. String isn't mutable. If I try to change the value of a character in a string on the fly like this, I'll get an error. It won't let me do that. Lists are mutable. You can change items in the list on the fly after it's created. Very useful. All right. But there's a second thing we get. We can't glance over here. Look in this list. That's a string. That's a string. That's an integer. 
In lists, you can mix and match data types. I can put floats in there. I can put strings in there. I could put integers in there. And what you're going to find most important down the line is I can put objects in there. And when we learn about object orientation in classes, you're going to realize you can create your own data types. And you can get things of that data type and you can put them in lists. And it's very cool and it's very useful. Okay? So down here, I can make my list of two. Integer, float, string, uh, integer. And look at this. I can even put a list in there. So a list can have a list as part of its uh, collection. So integer, float, string, and then look at this. Just like it did up top when I printed it, it has the list as an item. All right? So you can have a list as part of a list. All right? Back when I was a, a goofy college student, they were called multi-dimensional arrays. So you had arrays where you could uh, go into... It basically rows in columns so that you could keep track of data in a grid. Well, that's how we do things in Python. We just put a list inside of a list. That's all. It's a big list that is a bunch of other lists. So all the lists inside will be the rows, and the part in that big list will be the columns. That's it. Done. It's really simple. Now, lists, like the strings, also have little mini programs or methods that we can run on them. One of the most important ones for list is append. I can add to it. So as you can see down here, I added the string, one more item, to list two, and then I printed it out. Okay? You can also do a len on a list to see how many items are inside of it. I didn't do this in the little sample code. Okay? But if I wanted to, do not be alarmed. That is just my dryer, which sounds like the Hawaii missile warnings. <laughs> Um, I save that. I rerun it. Look, it says six. So there are one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I don't print it anymore, but there's six because I added one more item. Here. I'll leave it like this for you. So I want it to be correct. A little, a little, a little. There we go. Good. That makes me feel better. So now I print the size of the list and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Six items in the list. Okay? So that's basically the part of the video that has to deal with the first half of your slides for unit two. All right? We dealt with strings. We did a bunch of things with strings. Later on, we're going to do a uh, grand finale. So I'll show you all of the things that we did with the strings. But basically... You can, you can do a len on them, you can index into them, you can slice into them, you can also slice into lists. Um, watch out, you'll get an out-of-bounds error. If you ask for something that's not in there, you can do index math, and, and strings have a bunch of methods you can run. Lists, kind of similar, but are like strings on steroids in that they're mutable. I can go change objects on the fly inside of lists, and they also can hold any data type my heart desires, including lists themselves. Okay, very much more dynamic than strings, very much more useful than strings. Lists are, as a data scientist, lists are going to be your best friend because you're going to see a lot of things we're going to do is you're going to get blah, big blobs of data. And what you're going to do is you're going to get that data in a form where you can examine it, and then you're going to examine it for certain criteria. If you hit that criteria, put it in a list. Keep looking in the data, find something, put it in a list, put it in a list. And you're going to see that's what you're going to do when you clean data. You're going to basically go through massive amounts of data looking for certain criteria. When you find that criteria, you'll throw it in lists. And you're like, let me look through all the data first, and then I'll go back to my list and find all the things that I had. All right? Um, then that's it for that part. But... Oh, one, two, three. We're going to do something. One last little thing, which is... Kind of fun, kind of interesting. We'll see what you think about it after you've seen it. All right, let me save that. Now, if I run it, nothing should happen, yeah? Good, nothing happens. So, let me do that. Let me do that. I'm sure in Camtasia I am zooming in because now I'm playing around at the bottom of the field. All right. I create a variable called string4, str4, and I assign it hello world. Because I've been doing this a while, I happen to know that hello world is 11 characters. The word hello, a space, and the word world. 
So, if I want to print it, but I want to play around with indexing, I can print 0, and what do I get? I get the H. That makes sense. We start counting at 0, and I go, hello world. So, I want to print the last item, okay? So, I know it has 11 characters, but what happens when I say 11 for 11 characters? I think I know. Boom! You explode. Because you start counting at zero, you really have zero through ten. Okay? If I ask for the 11th character of a, well, if I ask for the 12th character, technically, because I'm asking for 11, and I start counting at zero, of something that's only 11, it's going to blow up. So if I want that last part of the string or the D, I want to make sure I use 10, right? Okay, but it is a different situation if I do slicing, because now I have an interval, okay? And now the second part of the interval is exclusive. It's the first thing I don't want. So now if I run it, I get hello world, okay? Where in the past, I wasn't able to use that 11 because it would give me an overflow. Now I can use it. But there's a little bugaboo here that you might want to know about. I'm going to put 12 there. That's two past it. Okay. Think it'll work? It's probably going to give me an error, right? Nope. It works. What if I give it 257? <laughs> it works. In the past, I have gone up as high as 8,000. I'm going to press the envelope. I'm going to go 9,000. See what happens. It still works. Okay. I think I know why. I think it has to do with basically if you set it at an arbitrarily high number, you can then use the command to print any string you give it all the way to the end. I get that. But then why do the indexing? Why just print? Why not just print the string? I, I don't know. Maybe you can do error checking. And if the string is greater than 9,000, you'll catch it and only do the first 9,000. I don't know. But I do know that this is a little weird. <laughs> because I've got an 11 character string and I'm in indexing from 0 to 9,000 and it's still working without error and working fine, okay? But what led me to this little facet of Python is this. Good two years ago now, I had a student who was interested in printing Hello World, but that student wanted to use reverse indexing. So let's... Do a little reverse indexing. As you know, if you read the slides, you can go into a string using reverse indexing and start at the right-hand side of it and not the left-hand side of it. So if I do negative 1, I get the D. That's the last item right there. If I do negative, is it 11? If I do negative 11, I get the capital H. So negative 11 is right there. Okay? Now, something interesting about slicing. When I do slicing with reverse indexing. Uh, let's say I want to grab negative 4 and then negative 1. So what am I doing right here? I'm grabbing negative 4 and then I want to go to negative 1. So negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4 is O, R. Now negative 1 is the first thing I don't want. So that's the D. So I should get the O, R, L when I do that. And I do. So that works. When you do reverse indexing, If you, as long as you're going left to right, you can go negative 4, and it grabs where you want to start, and it goes to the first thing you don't want with the negative 1. Okay? Where people run into trouble is they say, let's say they want to print the string backwards. So I want negative 1, and I want you to go to negative 11. Okay? When I try to run that, it tells me to go away. Okay? Because Python wants to go, when it does printing, it wants to go left to right. So if I give it an interval that's going right to left, it's not going to take it, and it just gives me zero. It doesn't like it at all. Okay? So what the student wanted to do, well, there is one little trick. Let's say I did, like before, let's say I wanted to do negative 1 to negative 4 because I wanted to print these this little string in the middle. I do that. It doesn't like it, so I get an error. So what do I do? I give it the negative 1. I give it the third parameter to go backwards. So now when I do it, I get DLR. See? Negative 1 is where I start. Negative 4 is the first thing I don't want, the O, so I get DLR. So that works. So that's a neat little discovery. 
but there's something that we want to do that causes a little bit of trouble. The student wanted to print hello world using reverse indexing. Okay, why you would want to do it, I don't know. But when you're learning, you don't ask that. You want students to explore. So I said, okay, <coughs> where do you want to start? You want to start at the negative one, right? And then you want to go to negative 11. All right. Oh, wait, hold on. So when you run that, what do you get? Nothing because it blows up. What if I give it the right thing? Negative 1 to negative 1. I run that and I get hello world, okay? Because it's not the D because the D is the first thing you don't want. So the student, logically, put in a 0 and said, okay, uh, that will be the first thing I don't want. Now is this going to work? It doesn't work, okay? Because 0 in this context is the H. All right. So now you're starting with the H and going to the end and telling it the next thing you don't want is the H. It doesn't like that. It doesn't like that at all. So you're kind of stuck in a problem there. So what I told the student to do was this. You get the hello world, but then you do a plus sign. OK. And then when you do the plus sign, you can add something to do it. Do string four. And this time using a single character, not an index, just add the last character. So this will do hello world. And this alone, it's not the interval now, it's going to grab negative one, will be the D. And it'll tack it right on to the end of it. So we had that. Okay. So now going straight ahead, the student was able to do his hello world. But I think, I'll do it right here. I think we were also able to do it if we did string four, um, negative one, negative 11. Uh, no, this missed it, but we did negative one. So we were playing around with these solutions too. And that gave it backwards without the H. And then we had to add the H. So we did it that way too, and we were playing around with different solutions that way. If I do You see, there's still no way to grab it. If I do negative twelve, what would that do to me? Yeah. It still gets me. So these are the different things that we were playing around with. It's some of the idiosyncrasies as far as Python is concerned with printing and intervals and doing different things like that. Okay? So I wanted you to see that because I think it's fun and I think it's interesting. It is time for a grand finale. All right. Again, don't type any of this in. I'm going to put this on Sakai and you're going to have, well, I'm going to put it on Sakai when Sakai comes back. You're ready. You remember I'm doing this on Saturday. Um, there's no Sakai today. Everything is down. They had to replace some electrical stuff in the Hill Center. So a lot of services at Rutgers are down. Today, Sakai is one of them, so I can't upload this. I'm going to have to just keep it on my hard drive till it's time to go. And I can't put any of this code up on Sakai right now, but man, maybe tomorrow I'll be able to do it, all right? All right, let's go. Save. All right, so we see all the things we did with strings. We got the length. We sliced into it. We were able to do math. Uh, we came here. We run some methods. Then all of a sudden, we got to lists. We were able to show that lists were mutable. And lists can hold multiple data types. It makes them super useful. We could also use methods on them because we used a method to add an item to our list right down there. And then we played around with reverse indexing and printing and, and doing some things and learned that Python has some idiosyncratic behavior when it comes to that kind of stuff. All right? All right, cool. Um... I am not really going to do announcements because you're going to have announcements in a couple days. I'm guessing you're going to get this on either – if the unit starts on Tuesday, which is the day we had class, then I'm probably going to drop this video on you Wednesday or Thursday. And then over the weekend, you will get the second video, which will deal with loops. And then in this unit, you'll get a third video, but that will come after 
the assignments. And the third video will deal with Project Euler. And we'll, uh, we'll I'll tell the story about Project Euler, and I'll show you how if you you know, I do with the Project Euler because at the point you get to loops, you have enough skill to go out and solve some problems. And Euler is a big list of problems. A lot of people come to this class and they already have a little bit of experience with programming and stuff like that. And so in order to give them something to do, I introduce people to Project Euler and I said, go solve some Euler problems. Okay. You'll get that when we get there. Um, other than that, keep chugging along, keep doing what you're doing. I'm shooting this Saturday, so I haven't seen assignments yet. I haven't seen quizzes yet. So I'm assuming you guys are doing fine and everything is good. Uh, I've read a lot of your introductions. We have a, a varied bunch of people in this class, so I think that's interesting. But I'm going to hold off a little on the announcements and do more when I shoot the second video. And then that will give you a flavor for what's going on. And then we're going to actually start talking about getting you the instructions for your midterm project. Because we're going to do some online stuff with Python, and we're going to write a paper about it, all right? Then I'm getting out of here. You be good, and I will see you very soon. Actually, I saw you a couple of days ago because we already had class, right? So I'll be seeing you soon, and you'll be getting more videos soon, all right? All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.